Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gaming to the Com video. There have been some leaks concerning Intel's Skylake. Now, these link, these supposed leaks, put the i7-6700K, which of course is currently the flagship of the Skylake uh, S, um, versus Intel's own i7-4790K, which of course is the Devil's Canyon. Now, I would love to include these leaked images, but it's probably not a good idea, so I have done this as an article as well, um, so you can just click on it in the video description. I will tell you what the performance numbers are, but because this is a leak, I'm probably going to assume Intel are not going to be happy with this, so just for copyright reasons and, you know, YouTube funniness, I just don't want to include them, just in case. I don't think anything will happen, but I don't want to take chances with this stuff. Anyway... So, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what the Skylake is in terms of specifications, even though you probably know what they are ad nauseum by now. So, it still is, and we're referring only to the 6700K here, the other ones just don't get a look in, at least in this video. The 6700K is still 4 cores running hyper threading which means that it has a clock speed, a base clock speed of 4 GHz, 4.2 for boost. This is combined with 8 MB of level 3 cache, as well as a rather robust graphics chip. It's actually considerably more powerful than previous iterations. It's the, G2, it's the GT2, 48 execution units, and that's running up to 1067 MHz, and of course will support DirectX 12. You're probably thinking to yourself, well, that sounds a pretty much like, oh, I don't know, any of Intel's desktop processors for some time, and you'd be right. Most Intel flagships, like, for example, the 4770K, the 2600K, they've all had very similar setups, all four CPU cores, all running hyper-threading. There have been some improvements, uh, slight improvements in clock speed or what have you, although I will say that this clock speed is actually slightly below that of the Devil's Canyon, the 4790, but even so, there are some other differences, primarily the Socket 1151, which is the socket that, of course, Skylake and the 718 uh, sorry, the Z170 chipset, which is what's going to be launching alongside Skylake, um, they will be utilizing DDR4, so that's going to obviously improve memory bandwidth. So what about performance numbers? Well, as I said, you can actually check out the images if you so desire, which is in the article, but I'll read them out. Once again, I just don't want to include them because of copyright slash YouTube funniness, but you never know. Um, so home... Conventional home conventional 3.0 scores with the 6700K is around 3,718, whereas the Devil's Canyon is 3468. That's a pretty significant difference. Now with Fire Strike, things are actually quite interesting. There's a very titchy difference in the overall score. You're looking at uh, just a just 100 points or so, which is, which is, to be honest with you, if you're doing multiple runs within the margin of error. However, the physics score is almost 1,000 points. It's basically 11,900 with the Devil's Canyon, and it's 12,733 with um, with the uh, with um, Skylake, which is a quite a significant difference, to be totally honest with this. And it pretty much goes in line with the IPC gains that you'd expect. These types of uh, performance differences are definitely noticeable throughout Cassandra as well. Now, Cassandra is sometimes actually quite sensitive to pure clock speed. Um, and obviously it does depend as well on... Cassandra can be very sensitive to the type of calculations, for example, is it floating point, is it integer calculations, and that can make rather large differences to the architecture, and Cassandra is also rather sensitive to memory bandwidth, and in fact there is of course tests for memory bandwidth, which we'll get into in a moment, however, with dry stone, um, Devil's Canyon is quite considerably behind it. It's 181 points versus 194, whereas Devil's Canyon does have a slight lead when it comes to Whetstone, 96.22 versus 91.89. Now, I think we can all agree that that's probably primarily down to clock speed. 
but the one that is absolutely getting slapped is bandwidth. Now, as I've said, DDR4 is being introduced with 11.51, and as I've mentioned multiple times before, yes, it's going to make a large difference when it comes to the discrete IGP, uh, basically the built-in, uh, sorry, with the IGP, not discrete uh, GPU, but the, with the IGP, the built-in GPU on the system. But it's probably also going to make a difference when utilizing discrete GPUs as well. So, for example, let's say you ran out and buy and bought a GTX 980 just for the sake of argument, you're probably going to notice a difference. Um, when leveraging DirectX 12, and I'll tell you why. Because with DirectX 12, because the CPU uh, theoretically could have up to eight threads, all doing various bits and pieces of the game logic, it could be doing rendering tasks, it could be doing what have you, there are instances where the CPU is gonna have to look outside of the cache. In fact, that's actually quite quite often and what happens is if the processor hasn't actually got the information in the cache it's going to have to farm that you know it's going to basically have to look to the system and say hey uh, PC memory have you got this whereas obviously if you've got a larger cache that does help but let's say you've got eight megabytes of cache which obviously level three cache which the processor has to fall back on it's also got level two and level one but even so, there's no way you can fit all of the game logic in there, and sometimes you're going to get what's known as a cache miss. Um, this is particularly true when dealing with a lot of rendering tasks and other bits and pieces. I'm vastly simplifying this. The point being that with DirectX 12, there's probably going to come points, particularly as developers get more used to leveraging DirectX 12, um, and this could even be more so true for those who are running very high-end setups, uh, particularly for potentially for SLI. Anyway, I'm getting into a long a, a long thing about this, but the bottom line is there are significant differences in gigabytes per second. Um, and, for example, the Devil's Canyon hits 20.8, um, Skylake uh, Sky hits 23.4, um, and this is, th this is what we can start seeing multiple times over in these different tests. In real world, is it going to make a difference for the average game? If you're GPU bound, certainly probably not. So just for the sake of argument, let's say you're trying to run 4K on a single on a single card, and you know the GPU's struggling simply because of rendering performance, it can't physically put out the frames any faster. In which case, no, DDR4 is probably not going to make a difference. But if you're certainly running situations where you know you've got a load of GPU performance left over or you're running multiple card setups I could see I could definitely see an advantage of course we don't really know for certain because let's face it all of these tests that I'm telling you at the moment they are based on early drivers A for the chipset B early BIOS and C we're not seeing comparisons of, with the same platform on DDR3 obviously Devil's Canyon yes is using DDR3 but we are not seeing the same clock speed, so we don't actually know what the IPC gains are exactly. We can certainly give a good guess based on the clock speed of Devil's Canyon versus the clock speed of Skylake. But second point, it will be very interesting to see what happens when we're using DDR3. Remember, Skylake's motherboards will support, uh, some motherboards will support, 11, uh, some 1151 motherboards will support uh, DDR3L. So what that means is that we can actually do some really good comparisons with that and say, hey, what type of advantage are we going to be getting for switching to DDR4? Which is maybe something to think about, um, particularly if you're going for more of a low-end setup. Uh, maybe not the six. Maybe you wouldn't want to do that for the 6700K. But if you're eventually in in the future, possibly. Um, it, it, maybe it could be a good intermediary step if you've got some DDR3 L uh, laying about. So what do I think? Well, assuming these leaks are accurate, and it's looking pretty genuine. I mean, the previous leaks were pretty suspicious, but yeah, I'm I'm probably going to be upgrading. But then again, I I was always intending to grab the the uh, latest Skylake anyway, simply for a review purposes and b because well. We're going to be shifting around reviewing systems anyway, so it just makes sense because we need another system. 
uh, just because of the way we're going to be doing our reviews in the not too distant future we're going to need yet another rendering rig we've already got like three systems but we're going to need a, f a fourth most likely so it just makes sense to go for Skylake um, and I'm not exactly sure probably um, I'm not exactly sure the amount of RAM or anything like that I'm going to be getting but I've got a couple of ideas I'm playing around with so yeah, we will be covering Skylake, hopefully on release, which of course is the 5th of next month, that's August, if you're watching that, this video in some distant, you know, present time. I'm not sure why you'd watch this in three months, considering this is speculation of, you know, performance of Skylake, but there you go. Uh, finally, one last thing. Um... Over the next couple of days, I'm going to be insanely busy. Amata will still be putting out videos. I'm going to try and do my best to get out a few other bits and pieces of content. But I will be insanely busy. As those following me on Facebook will know, I've just been sent a uh, MSI uh, GTX 960, which I'm reviewing. Maxwell, of course. So I'm currently reviewing that in the midst of it. Plus doing other bits and bobs. So hopefully... We are changing around some of our review processes when it comes to the GPUs. So Maxwell, this is actually our introduction to that. So it's actually taking me considerably longer because I'm like, uh, I'm not quite sure if this is going to work and inevitably it doesn't and then I have to redo it all and therefore it's taking me a bit longer than what I'd like. Hopefully, however, it's not that the results are going to be more accurate because they couldn't be more accurate. It's just the way we'd already done it. You know, the results are the same. But I think it's going to be presentation and the overall aesthetic, I think, is going to be better for you. Plus, as well, hopefully I can actually cover a little bit more with them. Uh, in other words, it's going to be a little bit more thorough. Now, if you do want to follow along with me as well on Twitter, you can. That's RGT Crimson Rain. That's R-A-Y-N-E. Or you can, once again, go to Facebook. Um, I will be doing a couple of updates over the next few days. But the review, the GTX 960, currently isn't in my system, but I've got all the all of the filming done in regards to the kind of unboxing, and I've done most of the preliminary kind of write-up of the Maxwell architecture, the specifications, and so on. So tomorrow, I can basically get my butt into benchmark mode, which is going to be fun. I actually really like benchmarking to a degree. It can be a little frustrating once you've looked at a you know benchmark like 1500 times but i quite like the process i must say anyway hopefully oh and there will be a lot of overclocking testing done as well and some other bits and pieces that i'm not going to quite go into just yet but anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video um once again if you do want to see the images of this damn thing you can check out the article which once again is linked in the video description apologies i just wasn't 100% comfortable putting the images in the video simply because um, I'm not quite sure how Intel deal with leaks. I don't think they'd really care that much, but I'd rather not. I'd rather not take any uh, precautions. Let's go with that. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.